Hello everybody and welcome to the northeast corner of my property. It's a beautiful fall day and I love this time of year. Uh, but the purpose of this video is to share how my Chevy Malibu is running in 2018. It started having issues with the engine. It was leaking oil, it ran out of oil. I should have checked it, I never did. And uh, basically it ran out of oil. And now uh, I recognize the sound. I just always give this update. I recognize the sound, I had some oil in my car and I added the oil. So fortunately I saved the engine from dying completely or blowing up. But uh, it has, it's been having issues for two years ever since that happened. I think it was in about November of 2018. So it's been almost two years officially now. Uh, fortunately I've been working from home lately. I was putting a thousand miles a month on my vehicle. So fortunately I only put like 100 or 200 on it now. Cause I'm, when I'm while doing the tours. Uh, so I don't put nearly as many miles on it per month as I used to. And that's good. And then uh, I've uh, I've been regularly doing tours, so that'll be the most wear and tear that I'll do on the vehicle. I go to church and I uh, I go shopping, but those things aren't you don't have to drive too far to do. So the tours will be the most driving that I'll do in a month. And uh, I just wanted to go over how it's running and uh, everything that's been going on. It's considering everything that's gone on to it in the past two years. It is running pretty good. Um, I've had to get new brakes and new uh, wheels, front tires anyways, those were pretty bald. I kind of made a video about that when I got a flat tire uh, a few weeks ago, but that really doesn't have anything to do with the engine. It's really been a good car. I've had it for three or four years. I think it was 2017, so it's probably three. I know it's over three years that I've had it now. So I think I, I think I've done pretty good. I paid about 6000 for it. At this point, I'd probably get about 2000 at the most. So, I mean, it's normal depreciation with how much I used to drive. Now I don't drive much at all, like I was mentioning. Uh, but fortunately, I still am working or else, you know, I'd be driving it looking for something. But, uh, yeah, it's been it's been a good car. I've, I've loved it. And, uh, I haven't had as many road rage incidents as I had before while I was driving. I used to, while I was merging on Route 76, I used to be honked at all the time because the the major issues are accelerating and um, going up hills. Those, those will be the two major issues. But I did have one incident, I'll kind of go into this. I wasn't in an accident, but uh, it was kind of a road rage incident. It could have been a lot worse than it was. Uh, had I've gotten out of the vehicle or uh, confronted the person. So I was on uh, Route 45 in between uh, Lisbon and Salem. I was coming towards Salem. As you know, if you know that area, there's a big hill that kind of goes down and it runs over a bike trail. Uh, and then there's also a creek at the bottom. So it's like a huge hill that you got to go down and then it flattens out at the bottom and then you go up. So Basically on that, I was going down the hill and at the bottom, I was following a uh, a guy with a stock trailer in a truck and uh, he was turning at the bottom of the hill and I know I was going to have issues because uh, I have issues accelerating and going up hills, both of which I had to do. He came to a complete stop. He had to make a left hand turn and uh, there's another car coming so he came to a complete stop. So right at the bottom of the hill, I was stopped completely. So I put on my four ways because there were a few people behind me. And uh, this one person, I could already tell they were agitated because they've been following me ever since Lisbon. And as you know, in between, on 45, there's a lot of hills, small hills, which if you have issues with your car, um, you, you might be... Uh, you might be getting on somebody's nerves and they've been tailgating me flashing their lights already so i start i put my four ways on there's no spot i could pull off um because it really does bother me when people follow me really close especially when there's nothing i can do um you know it's my engine so i was uh i was going up the hill and they kept following me honking their horn uh flashing their lights 
uh, and they could have easily gone around me. There's multiple times they could have gone around me. There, it's a dotted line on the top of the hill because the hill's so long and straight that they could have easily gone around me. But I think they wanted a confrontation. So um, I'm going, and then I get to the top of the hill. They're still following me really close. And uh, you could tell they're even more agitated. But I just kept going, and they kept following me really close. And then uh, there's like a BP station at uh, the bottom of the hill, like before you get going to Salem. And I was going to turn left, and they started following me in that turn lane. So I'm like, I'm, I'm done with these people. I don't want them to follow me anymore. They're following me a few feet behind the whole time. And uh, so I made a right. I'm, I turned in the other lane like I was going right and they were turning left and then they started they put on their blinker when I went and I'm like oh no and I've I've already dealt with road rage incidents before um, so I kind of know how to handle them just don't ever confront the person and keep driving especially you know with my disability it's not a good idea to get out of a car uh, risk getting mugged it's not a good idea for anybody too because there are multiple people in the car and uh, they didn't look too friendly. So um, I pulled into the gas station and they pulled, they followed me in the gas station, followed me out of the gas station. I was actually gonna get gas, but they followed me in the gas station. So I'm like, I'm not getting gas. Um, and then there's, and then uh, I kept going down the road. There's a McKinney's furniture. So I followed, I, I went in that cause they're still following me very close. So I went in that and uh, turned around and uh, they stopped right outside of McKinney's Furniture and I was so glad they didn't follow me in. Uh, but they they all put out their fingers, there are three of them in the car, their middle fingers, and then just kind of peeled off and drove away. And I was so glad. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had some bad, some bad road rage incidents in previous when doing tours. Uh, that was one of the worst ones though I've had. So, you know, it's always scary um, when those things happen, but I just would always encourage people don't confront the people and don't get out of your vehicle if something like that happens. Keep driving. Now, what I was thinking, if they'd have followed me in McKinney's, I would have driven, driven back into Salem and, uh, and they would keep following me and then I would have found a police officer and, uh, I would have gone next to him, and, and if they would have followed me back there, if they would have followed me all the way behind the police officer, you know, and I'd be like, well, this person following me at it. I don't know what to do. So um, that's how I would have handled it had he kept following me. So I, I would probably have been okay, but I just always encourage people not to uh, to get involved. It's, it's not worth losing your life over somebody you're never going to meet again. But anyways, I... I it's been running good. I've been happy with the car. Uh, it's about time to get a new one, but it, I want to get it to 200,000, which may take a while now that I'm working from home. But whether it takes a year or a few years, or if it breaks down on the highway before then, uh, I won't get as much out of it, but uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a thrill trying to make it to 200,000 on a car that's on its last legs. So, Anyways, I just wanted to give you an update like I do quarterly, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.